we must stand up. There are answers. And we've got to expose the darkness in the world so that we can be free. Self-made gods are nice things to have around until people actually start to need God. And that's what's happening in our culture. We need to do something. We need to say something. We need to stand up, be bold and courageous. You've got to stay on guard. Hi, I'm Drenda, and this is Drenda on Guard. You can have influence in government and in your children's education and their medical decisions. Today, we're going to get into it. I'm Drenda, Drenda on Guard. Let's go for it. We've got a live audience. Yeah. We're here at Happy Life Women's Conference, and uh, we have over 600 women here, and we are on fire to make difference in our culture and to change what we see as being harmful to families, to children, and to our nation. And so I'm delighted today to welcome guests with me, Ruth Edmonds. Hello. Good to have you, Ruth. And Ruth is with the Advancement Direction at CCV, which is the Center for Christian Values, Virtues, Virtues, and uh, also Colleen Wilcox as well from CCV. And I love what you ladies do, what you do for righteousness, what you do for God's kingdom, what you do for families and children. And I just want to get into it today. You know, we got to declare a war on sadness. There is so much sadness in the land because the land has departed from the ways of God. And when we leave God's ways behind, we break down families and redefine them. We break down home. We, drink, we break down marriage. We break down our nation. We break down the government, constitution, law enforcement, all these things. It has a sad effect. It brings negative things, sowing and reaping. It is not a good situation. And we see it. We see the fallout of it. And so I know you both have stories why you're passionate. I have a story why I'm passionate. I want to get into that today, okay? Is that all right? All right. all right, Colleen, I know you had a, a situation happen with the school system with your own daughter, and that woke you up to what was going on. What happened? Wow, so my daughter was in sixth grade, and we were in the government school system, the public schools, and I got a phone call from school one day, and my daughter was crying, and she said, Mom, I just want to come home. And I said, Allie, what's wrong? What happened? She said, no one told me that today was a day of silence and that I had to be quiet and I couldn't speak. And I said, What's, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. She said, well, today is a day where we're celebrating all of my classmates, mind you, they are 12 years old, 12, uh, that have been silenced because they are uh, either transgender or they are um, homosexual. And she said, and I was told that we were all gonna be silent on this day, and she said, I said, well, I'm a Christian, and I don't, you know, it's, people can do what they wanna do, but I don't have to do that because I don't believe that that's right. And she said that the teacher took her aside and mean mugged her and said, no, you do have to be quiet and you will be quiet. And so she then began, began getting bullied. That same day, the kids came to her. Even children that she thought were allies uh, came to her and started bullying her. So at the age of 12, she started getting bullied for being a Christian in the public school system. And we said to ourselves, enough, enough. Absolutely. We're, you know, <laughs> this, it's time to get out. It's time to pull out. There's no accountability. And we tried to talk to the school. We couldn't get anywhere. And so, yeah, we are now homeschooling both of our kids. Our son uh, decided that he wanted to give it a go in ninth grade in the public school system. And he came home after the first day and he said, okay, I'm ready to homeschool. And I said, what happened? <laughs> he said, well, I, um, I, the teacher said we had to get up in class and, and announce what our personal pronouns were. And he said, I couldn't believe it. And, and for him, that was, he, he really wanted to be with his friends and, but you know, he, We've made the decision that we are Christ followers and we're going to follow Christ and we're going to teach our children to follow Christ and teach our children from a biblical worldview, not the indoctrination camps of 
the public school system, the government right. school system. There's so much animosity toward faith, toward Christianity. We're told a lot about students being bullied because of their choices to, to transition to other genders, which the idea was planted by school teachers, right? That's right. By those in the media, those in the culture, those in the celebrity culture. It's not like these kids just woke up one day, crazy things now are happening, studies in the womb, and they're saying now they can look at the baby in the womb and see whether it leans toward these tendencies or these tendencies, when in fact 99.9% .9 of all of our biology is yeah. either male, male or female, or female. That's right. but they're not saying That's that, right? right? Amen. They're not telling people that. And they're putting kids in this situation. I say this, when I was a kid, I struggled just to figure out which class I was supposed to get to, where Absolutely. my locker was, what I was yeah. supposed to do. Can you imagine having to choose your pronoun and be told that you may not be a girl, you may not be a boy, and yet right. they say we're the ones psychologically damaging kids by not accepting and embracing all of these ideologies that are really, as far as I'm concerned, they are from the darkness, they are not from the kingdom right. of God, they're not biblical, and they're not even practical. Ruth, what is your story? Yeah, yeah, thank you. You know, my story really is that um, as a believer, um, and, and not only as a believer, but as a citizen of the United States of America, we have these um, inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We're not guaranteed it. We have the right to pursue it. Right. And so in my spirit, I have always, always had a passion for justice and a disdain for injustice. Mm -hmm. And Me right too. now, what's happening in our culture, in our country, is injustice. There is a hatred for our country that is also being fueled um, by this whole by the transgender um, um, culture, and it's being put upon us. It's not enough now to just be able to say, well, I will respect your right to, you know, to your, per, your opinion and right. your way of life, and then you respect mine. No, it's about you have to affirm me. Right. And it's like, but I can't do that. Right. You know, that's not my truth. You know, we right. talk about your truth and my truth. That's not my truth. <laughs> yeah. And now we're being told. Yeah. That's right. That's it's right. like, that's right. we can't, you, you know, we have a right to our consciousness. And so this is a matter of our citizenship in this, in this country, as well as our citizenship in the kingdom of God. And we have to fight. We have to fight like heaven, y'all. <laughs> we got to fight. Yeah. You know, right. it is not going to be easy. This is not a sprint. This is a long game, y'all. And we've got to get in the fight. It is going yes. to be difficult. It's going to be hard. The Bible said that we would be persecuted for our faith. But I guarantee you that if you, if we sit back, our kids, they're, they're done for, okay? They're done for. We have got to fight for our children, and God is going to hold us accountable yes, he will. to that. You know, yes. I've, I've got, we've got some resources, and we'll talk about it, but, you know, if you're not already connected to some sources like CCV and Intercessors for America and, and Faith Life Church, get plugged in because plugged if in. you're not impacting the culture and government, government is taking over yes, your life. I that's promise good. you that. That's right. You know, we've talked that's about right. the seven spheres of influence and that there are influences and the church was kind of relegated to you can only deal in religion. You're not supposed to talk about politics. You're not supposed to talk about government. You're not supposed to talk about education or medicine. The experts will tell you what to do. And I have right here a full manual that was provided to me um, of, a, of a children's hospital. They're caring for LGBTQ patients and families in pediatric settings. Mind you, these kids now are being pushed. This is being pushed on them by school teachers, by uh, school design, and it's coming from a higher place than even there, Absolutely. than the local school system. And in this, it tells them how to take care of these kids at the hospital. And they're not really given any options. They're basically told this is acceptable, this is right, this is what it's supposed to be like and here's how you take care of it. They tell them how to do binding and chest binding of kids. When an individual uses clothing or accessories to flatten their chest to appear more masculine, may require accessing, asset, assessing 
for skin breakdown and educating on safe binding practices. So now we have the, the medical professionals teaching these kids how to bind, and I, I hate to even read this, but I'm gonna read it. It says, the placement of the penis and testicles to be not noticeable through clothing, clothing and they bind them with tape and do tucking practices, ace bandages, duct tape. Can you imagine duct tape? And then the, the, the nurse that I talk with, she told me that these kids get horrific sores, horrific outcomes. They were never counseled that this may not be the right course of action. They were told, and their parents were told, if yeah, you, you don't, don't do, do this, your yes, child will commit, commit suicide. suicide. What they're not saying is 40% of them commit suicide after transition. Absolutely. They're not telling them that they make a right. million dollars per a child mm -hmm. doing this. It is it's ghastly, it's satanic. It I'm it sorry, is. I can't say yes. any other word. I'm Absolutely. trying to be good because I know they'll strike me, right? Mm -hmm. But you know what? Yeah. Jesus yeah. bore stripes on That's his right. back right. for freedom. That's right. And children need to know they That's can be right. free. That's right. They can be free Absolutely. from all of these oppressive things that are Absolutely. trying to take their identity from that God yeah. gave them. God gave them an identity. He made yeah. them male and female. Yeah. And when the world system is trying to lie to them and lie yeah. to their parents, and we don't even know what's going on. This is just the beginning. This thing is thick. Right. It tells them that they must uh, participate in all of these pride events and everything. So that, mm -hmm. that affirms these children and that it helps them to feel acceptance and feel safety. And they're, they're indoctrinating not only the kids, but the medical professionals have to do what they tell them to do or they lose their job. Absolutely. And not only that, so let, let's, we've talked about the medical professions, but in the schools, yes, in the local schools. So here's a, a local um, school here in, in central Ohio that have these badges. The National um, Educators um, Association came out with this QR code, and there are these badges that the teachers wear that says, I'm here, meaning I'm here for you. It's, we are excited that we are willing, that you you're willing to partner with the NEA um, by wearing your I'm here badge. By wearing your badge, you tell everyone that you are a safe person to discuss LGBTQ issues, affirming this, um, and that it couldn't be easier than by identifying yourself as a safe and supportive person. So now what you're doing is saying that if, if a teacher doesn't wear this badge, they're not a safe person. See, the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. And that's, that's what's going on. There's all these accusations. If you don't affirm, then you're all these negative things. It's the devil. And we have to stand against that. You've got to know the Word of God, and you've right. got to use the Word of God and say, you know, to H-E double L sticks, no way. Amen. You know, Amen. I know who I am. I know Amen. who's I Amen. Amen. You know, I am a safe Amen. place for Amen. every child, no yes. matter who they are. I'm a safe place. That's right. And so we have Amen. to fight against Amen. That's how I got the name Fight Like Heaven. Because I was right. so angry when I saw this material and understood what they were doing to children. I said to my son, this makes me want to fight like, and you know, mm. the, what word was there? The H-E-W. <laughs> hockey, hockey sticks. sticks. <laughs> and I was like, heaven. heaven. You know, I put the word heaven. And it, yes. all, it went off in my spirit. Yeah. It went off in my spirit that we do have to fight like yeah. heaven. Our weapons are not carnal. They're mighty. They pull down God. strongholds. We must pray, yes. but we also must act. The book yes. of Acts is a act. book about actions. The church takes action yes. when they see injustice. Mm -hmm. We're to expose the deeds of darkness. I can't even tell you how shocking it's been yeah. to me to see in religious circles yes. how many leaders, how many... I was on a Christian program, and I yeah. said, what would you like to talk about and fight like heaven? She said, well, just don't talk about politics. I said... Okay, I'll just talk about morality. How's that? She's like, okay. And I, I said, I said, you want to talk about children and what they're doing with children and LGBTQ? And she said, oh, I wouldn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I'm like, you're going to allow children to be violated. Yeah. I have an article here in the Epoch Times, ex-transgender teen recounts horrifying transition surgery. Do you see or hear these articles in the mainstream media? Absolutely not. They don't want you to. Years, years ago, probably 10 years ago, I was in Canada. I was on a flight. And uh, on the flight, the gentleman was telling me how their social health care system was being used to pay for all the transgender surgeries. I was shocked to see their clinics. Their, I think it was called Mosaic. I can't remember the name of the clinics. They Mosaic. were on every corner every corner. It was like a 7-Eleven or a quick trip. They were on every corner trying to pull in these, and you pull in there, and they, you know, you walk in, and then they start 
working you. I've watched this be done with abortion. I watched this be done in this, uh, with women's rights in the 70s. They coupled abortion with um, women's rights. So no men could speak up against aborting and killing their own offspring and children. And women were taught even this is my empowerment. This is my empowerment. I'm a woman because I can have an abortion. And now we see this whole thing go bizarre, right? We have FBI storming people's houses who have stood up for life and who've been in pro-life organizations. We have craziness going on because they are trying to ram it down our throat that you must do this and that the Supreme Court went a different direction than what they said. Now they're trying to intimidate you and put fear in you. And you've got to make a decision. I am not going to be afraid to speak up. I'm not going to be silent when children and my grandchildren and their Absolutely. lives are at stake. We can't be silent. We, we can't. cannot. And not this young girl, she explains all that happened. Her brutal, this is what the article says, her brutal transition to male, to male from female was anything but the romanticized gender journey that transgender activists and medical professionals had portrayed. Interesting. Mm. She says she's now 18, feels more like she's just awoken from a nightmare, and she's disappointed <clears throat> with the medical and school system that fast-tracked her to gender transition surgery. Have you ever been to a doctor's office, a hospital? Have you ever been in labor and felt like you got fast-tracked? You got fear messages? We should wake up. This is not just in this area, but there is a lot of uh, money being made. I had a doctor one time tell me, I know how, much, how many sir, uh, patients have to come through the door to, uh, make, to break even, and I know how many people I have to give a surgery to each month to make a great life. That was his quote, his quote. I, I, my mouth opened in shock. We think professionals, we've been indoctrinated to look to professionals instead of the Word of God and to think that the professional knows more than our professor of everything, and that is God, right? The professional that created everything that we see. So we have to return to the Word of God, don't we? Pastor, yeah, absolutely. And, and that's a great segue because you mentioned earlier that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. And so we have to learn, we have to become strategic in our response to these things. You know, we have to war. <clears throat> the weapons of our warfare are not common. We have to learn how to war in these things because the enemy has, there is a spirit, you guys. You know, we're not, it is a spirit, and it there is, is a spirit, spirit of Molech. Mm -hmm. It is child sacrifice right. that has this. been released in the earth. You got to know what that is, and then you have to learn how to fight against that Molech. He is out to steal, kill, and destroy all children. Well, when you take the children, then you take the generations. When you take the generations, then that's the end. But so, you know, we got to fight and we don't have a choice, but God has not left us without help and without support. God, and you all know this, at least at, at Faith Life, that there's an organization, the Center for Christian virtue. You know, we used to be citizens for community values, but everybody else was coming out the closet. So we came out the closet too. We are the <laughs> center for Christian virtue. You know? Yeah. That's right. Amen. Yeah. That's Amen. Right. Amen. 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 <laughs> Time out for being ashamed of the gospel right. of Jesus. Jesus Christ. That's, That's right. where the That's power right. is. Amen. That's We're not ashamed. Our authority We're going to have to because the That's enemy, right. he is not backing up. So we're going to have to be strategic. God has put in place organizations. And as citizens of this United States, you have the power. You've That's got right. to get on board. That's you've right. got to Take get. Back your you've authority. got to run for the yes. library board, the school yes. board. Yes. You've got to get in the commissions. Find out where you, where you fit in and go get it. We, the... the Kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violence take, take it by, by force. force. Time Amen. Out. Amen. That's right. Time I was just out. I was just in Canada, and I was. Uh, you'll hear the story. I was having a rough situation going on. There was harassment, and as I'm trying to pray about what to do and you know figure out the details of it, I look over, and there's a church, and each of the steps is painted in rainbow. 
I just was like, oh my gosh, every weekend, the people are being brainwashed, walking across the threshold into that church, and it's here as well. It's everywhere we look. They have taken seven mountains. They understand the seven mountains of influence. They understand spheres of influence, and you know what they did? They recruited the church. Yes. They recruited religious organizations. Mm-hmm. I don't believe, if you read Revelation, I don't believe Jesus would consider them a church. No. You know, he says he'll remove the lampstand if they go after the spirits of Balaam and they go after the error or the way of Balaam and Jezebel. And I do believe that Jezebel's spirit it has been driving this. Yeah. Now, I want to make yeah. it very clear. Every person is made in the image and Every likeness person. of God. Absolutely. And if a person is struggling in this area, we don't hate people. Right. We hate what Satan does to people. That's there right. is a difference, all right? Absolutely. We don't hate the person. We don't hate, especially, you know, when you read this young woman's story, yeah. and she says that she was convinced by the, the, these leaders that it would make her happy and that it would make her whole as a person. She was looking for wholeness. She was broken and hurting, but she found the wrong answer because Satan is there trying to offer a counterfeit to God's kingdom. And if we aren't raising our voice, those young children, those kids will not hear the truth and get freedom, get Absolutely. deliverance that was not offered to her. And it wasn't offered to her parents. She says she, remi- uh, she is uh, d- distressed that she will never be able to breastfeed a baby. That she'll Absolutely. never be Brenda. able to do certain things has been totally stripped from her. You know, abortion killed the baby in the womb, but this kills the ability for us to procreate, for us to have children, for grandchildren to be born, for children to, for them to have a child. And how many of you believe something <coughs> different than you believed when you were a teenager? That's right. That's right. Right? You grow up, right? You learn things. You learn what's valuable. You learn your mom was right about most things and you were wrong. (laughs) You learn a lot. So when we advocate our authority as parents to train up our child on the way they should go, and you know what? They're taking kids away from parents who won't affirm these lies that they were sold at school and in the medical industry, that if we don't raise them up in the way they go, they don't know what to do. And so they're confusing children, and that should make every mama bear in here angry. Absolutely. We're, we're confusing little kids who need direction, and they look to teachers, and they look to authorities, and they look to doctors for answers, and instead... Those those people are manipulating them for money and for their agenda, what is driving that. But I want to make it clear. We do not hate anybody. This is not a (coughs) message of hatred. This is a message of this person is made in the image of God, and Satan has tried to pervert it and destroy their life. And we as the church must step in there in the middle and say, no, 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 you're not going to do that to our kids. You're not going to do that to our nation. Well, and I want to say this. That that young lady, uh, Ruth and I both had... Uh, the privilege of sitting in the Ohio House while our SAFE Act, which is Save Adolescents from Experimentation, uh, was undergoing a hearing. And that young lady came in, and she was 17 years old at the time, folks. And she said when she was 15, she was confused. She was just simply confused. She was, she was a teenager that was undergoing some confusion. When she went to her parents, her parents said, well, we'll go to the doctor. And when they went to the doctor, there were no other alternatives given. There was no... There was no counseling. There was, it was exactly what you said, Drenda. Do you want a dead child or a living child? Mm -hmm. And she stood there at 17 years old. Like, think about that. She's just, it's 18 months for her had gone by. She had her breasts surgically removed and she stood there in the Ohio house and I watched that young lady cry and say, I'll never be able to breastfeed my children. And she said, no one should have been able to do this to me. I wasn't 18. I couldn't consent to this. My parents were strong-armed and bullied. Moms and dads, don't be bullied. That's right. That's you have right. authority. You have God-given authority. Amen. Do not let doctors, teachers, anyone bully you from, from seeing the world through the biblical worldview that you know is right through the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's right. Absolutely. You are the trainer of your children. That's God right. did not That's give right. that to anyone That's else. Right. Don't you give it up to That's someone right. else. Don't, Don't turn your child over to a Babylonian Absolutely. evil system that has plans 
for your kids. God says, I have plans for you, says the Lord. Plans to do you good, not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. And they're stealing the future of these children. And yeah. you know, it has to do a lot with depopulation as well as grooming Absolutely. kids for sexual things that we don't even want to go there. It's so disgusting. Absolutely. Mm. So I want to, again, I'm, I'm one of those people. I'm always looking for the answers. Okay, what yes, are we supposed too. to do? What do we do? What okay. do we do? Yes. First of all, take the rainbow back. Okay, yes, yes. that is, God gave us the rainbow. I'm a, everything I can get with a rainbow on it, I'm doing it because it belongs <laughs> to the people of God. God said, I will yeah. give, it is a sign that I give you that, you know, so take the rainbow back. I don't care if people think that you, don't care what people think. If they think that you're, you know, LGBTQ, that'll give them an opportunity to talk to you Open and then the you door. can introduce That's Jesus right. to them. And here's the other thing, about, <laughs> here's the other thing. You know what? They say, well, I was born this way and truth that true that dysphoria is real and we love people here's the thing a baby that's born because his mother was an alcoholic do you know they have that what is it alcohol fetal syndrome they're born with alcoholism already in them but you don't affirm that do you yeah. no no you treat the issue you love the babies it's the same thing we have yeah. to be strategic about what they're yes. saying and how yes. they're framing these arguments it's word salad it is word salad and so we we have to stop that. There's a book called The Mama Bear Apologetic. You got to get it. Go to Hobby Lobby. You can get it. Go online. It, will, it, it, it teaches you how to empower your kids to challenge cultural lies from a biblical worldview. Read, people. Okay? Become equipped. There's another book, Irreversible Damage. This is by Abigail Schreier, yes. the transgender craze that is seducing our girls. We've got to know what the enemy is doing so that we are not ignorant of his devices. But then we also need to understand how do we fight back against what's happening in the schools? So there's an organization, Child and Parental Rights Campaign, Child parentrights.org and they put out these wonderful brochures how to navigate the transgender landscape how to work within the school districts so that you can fight back against some of this that's pushing against you how to do it in a way where you're not speaking you know a lot of times we say oh they're teaching CRT. Well, really, they're not actually teaching CRT. But the teachers have been groomed in the practices and the philosophy, so they teach from that lens. So this is going to help you understand how do you fight the enemy in a strategic way. We just, we've, we've got to be strategic because the enemy is strategic. Right. Oh, yes, this is a well-laid-out plan. If you've read Fight Like Heaven, you know this plan has been in operation for over 30 years. There is a plan. Uh, corporations are involved in it. It's a new world order. They're calling it, it a great reset, a fourth industrial revolution, uh, and they're also calling it a new world order. As you've heard yes. from the voice of our president uh, in January of this year and years ago from other presidents, this is a well-thought-out, concocted plan to impact everything, even your finances finances, ESG, yes. <laughs> you know, they want to talk about uh, environment, social yes. issues, and governance. And those are the things that will be used to determine finances and whether your account gets zapped or whether, just what Pay PayPal did this past yes. week, right? Exactly. Where they were going to fine and everybody $2,600 on their PayPal account who had any misinformation in their social accounts. But now who determines the misinformation? Because Obviously, the school systems, the medical institutions, and these uh, woke corporations, their information is different. In our, in our thinking, uh, in the Word of God, this is misinformation. But they're twisting that to make it that, you know, if you think something different, if you think there's not election integrity, if you think there's some issue with what's happened in the last two years medically, if you think there's some issue with your children being, uh, you know, t told and groomed and all of these things to accept different lifestyles and to go a different direction than what you believe as a parent and what the Word of God says, it's not, it, it, this is not gray area. The Bible's very, very, very clear. No church can 
embrace right. these things and say they're okay and right. we're love is love and and all, that, that that does not go with the word of God. You know, God is not uh, he's not culturally going to just say, "Oh, I changed my mind because you guys changed your mind." Right. No, wow. that never never worked out that way, did it? It, it never did. Way. So what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah, which caused that city to be destroyed, is now happening across the nations of the world. And our African friends that we support and encourage in their ministries over there, they say the United States is putting force and pressure on them and saying, we will withhold our money. Right. See how money is tied to this? this is right. why we want you to stay out Follow of debt. Because That's what right. they do is they manipulate your money and they manipulate their money. And they say, if you don't do what we tell you to do. So the African community, to their credit, has fought even homosexuality, mm -hmm. the, accepting that as a norm in their culture. They've fought the LGBTQ agenda at the threat of we're going to withhold your money, starting with President Obama. So right. that is, that, I mean, that's what's moved forward. They were told, if you don't do this, we will take the money. If Absolutely. you don't do this, people will starve. So they put them in this position to choose whether they're going to have food, whether they're going to obey God. And that's Amen. what the enemy wants to do. But right. we have to say, I will not bow to the culture. That's I'd right. rather that's obey right. God. That's it right. worked for Daniel in the lion's den, right? It's worked throughout history. God will come through for those who will take a stand for righteousness, truth with love. Tolerance is not. We love people, but if we don't tell them the truth, we don't really love them. Absolutely. That tolerance thing is a lie because when you tell people, uh, when you say, I don't care enough about you to tell you the truth, I'm going to let you be mutilated. I'm going to mm. let your body be destroyed. I'm going to let your breasts be cut off. I'm going to let your body parts be cut off. Uh, men, uh, whatever that word is, what is it word? What? Dysphoria. Uh, yes, but what is it when they take men's organs off? I can't think of it. Castrate. Castrate. Mm -hmm. Castrate. They're castrating kids. <laughs> castrating kids. Yes, they are. So, and that is not reversible. It is not. So, again, we want to um, help you to know how, what, what can you do. Yes. First, okay, so at CCV, Center for Christian Virtue, we are a Christian public policy organization. We are the church's lobbyists at the state house, okay? Amen. So... Amen. So we're lobbying for a public policy that reflects the truth of the gospel. All these things that are going on right now that we were talking about in public schools. First of all, we are not anti-public schools. My husband's a public school teacher. I'm a product of public schools. Many of us are public. But you know what? When something's not working anymore, you don't just keep doing it because you've right. always done it. So what we have to do is create a, um, options for parents. And until there is competition in public education, the public education system is going to think they're the only game in town, and then they will bully parents. Yes. So the backpack bill. Anybody heard about the backpack, the backpack bill? bill? Where the dollars follow the child. You may not know this, but the state of Ohio appropriates dollars for every Every child that attends a public school between $5,500 and $7,000. Well, if you decide that you don't want your child, according to the backpack bill, when it gets passed and you're going to help us do it, yes. what happens is you can, as a parent, say, I want to take my child from that school and, and you can take them to a private school, another public school, a Christian school, or you can homeschool them and those dollars will follow the child. Yes. We've got to make parents right. Yes. Amen. Yes. And parents they right. Should. Because Absolutely. It's your money. It's, it's your, your money. money. And it's your yes. child. Yes. It's your child. Then yes. the other is the SAFE Act. We've been talking about this saving adolescents from experimentation, from the surgical mutilation of minors. It is the, the bill is 454. That doesn't matter. What matters is SAFE Act, okay? And what you need to do is you need to contact your legislators. If you don't know who it is, that's okay. Go to ccv.org um, or see me afterwards, see Colleen afterwards. We want to help you. We've got to let the legislators know that you care. It's not enough for us to sit here and say we care. They've got to hear from us. You know, That's most right. legislators never hear from their constituents, never. And so, but you know who they hear from all the time? The lobbyists. And you know what they're peddling? The money. But you have yes. the vote. And so your vote is far more powerful than the dollar bill. The dollars are yes. all about right. buying your vote. So right. go make your vote count. Go call the SAFE Act. We've got to get it passed this yes. year. The backpack bill. We got yes. it. We have got to save these children. And then it is the um, saving women's sports. 
Saving women's sports, yes. absolutely. That is the other bill. So God has given us the opportunities. We just have to now activate, activate. Yes. And CCV is the model that God has given us in the earth, the tool, the resource to do that. And then Colleen has some other things. Well, and I'll say this. I love what you said, Ruth, because listen, it's so easy to contact your legislator. Um, we, make, we make it easy for you. This is our voter guide. It's a nonpartisan voter guide, but you can open this up and it's gonna tell you where the candidates fall on the issues that matter to you as believers, right? Yes. If you go to BuckeyeBallot.com, you can enter in your address and it's going to pull up your current legislators. You can shoot them an email. I heard an, an, a legislator say the other night, just mm -hmm. a few nights ago, he said, it only takes three emails to get my attention. He said, I hardly ever hear from anyone. If I get three emails, I'm paying attention. This is obviously, they, they do this multiplication algorithm in their heads, guys. Yes. So do it. Yes. Contact your legislators. Vote. Listen, you might be discouraged. You might feel like, wow, what does it matter? It matters so much. And now more than ever, it matters. Mm -hmm. We make it easy for you. If you're in Ohio and you can go to BuckeyeBallot.com, you can get all the information you need. Get out to the polls and vote learn what you think, and also just pray, guys. I just yes. wanna encourage you that the yes. best thing you can do is get together and pray. Our team gets together every Tuesday morning, and we walk across the street, and we encircle the Ohio State House in prayer. Yes, and yes. we pray too. for our legislators. Yes. It's, right. And that's us being strategic, right? Because we right. have power. The power that's and right. authority of the Holy Spirit is that's resting right. in us. And we can pray and we can take our petitions before our Almighty King and He hears from heaven. That's and that's right. how change is Amen. made. And yes, these are right. out front. These are yeah. out there. Yes, we right. have those for you. And you can get those at ccv.org too. Yeah. You know, one of the great things you can do as well civil disobedience of raising a family. Who would have ever thought we would consider it civil disobedience to raise a godly family? But that's where we are in the culture. And in this article, it says, in reality, the best civil disobedience we, as members of the new countercultural movement, can perform is right in our own homes, raising our families. Amen. The way you raise your children, the stand you take for your children. We just had this past uh, couple weeks, we had a situation where a child was taken to a children's hospital, I won't say which one, but a children's hospital, and they tried to basically strong arm the parent because the child was not vaccinated. And then, uh, you know, with a vaccine that we know about. So anyway, am I not supposed to say that word? I don't know. Anyway, but uh, whatever it is, uh, the child did not have what they wanted it to have. And because of that, they called the police on the parents mm -hmm. and because the parents wanted to take the child home for observation. There was no serious medical situation, but that triggered them to want to hospitalize the child. Can I just say, we have got to use discernment. We cannot fall and follow the systems Absolutely. of this world and put our faith and trust in an ungodly system. That doesn't mean there aren't some great people there working. That doesn't mean there aren't some wonderful teachers, wonderful medical people. But we have to recognize there is an overlord, if you will. There is a system over them, and they're forced to do what they were told to do in that system. And so when you you go and put your child there, you are really abdicating a lot of your authority. So you need to know your medical rights over your child. You, know to, you, need, you need to know your parental rights over their education. And you need to exercise those rights. And don't give up. Don't let fear mandate. I was proud of the parents because the father stood up and he took the stand. And when the police ended up coming, he actually used the police as his advocate in the situation. He says, do I not have a right over my child to decide this or that? And he said, uh, yes, you do. And he said, and have I violated the law? And the officer said, not that I can tell. And it said, but this is the kind of climate we live in. But what if the officer would have been of a different persuasion? What if he would have fought differently? So we are working with people. It's not flesh and blood we're dealing with. Just recognize we're dealing with powers, principalities, might, and dominion that exalt themselves against the knowledge of the word of God. So you and I have to pray, use discernment. We can't operate in fear. We can't cower to the demands of the devil. We cannot let children 
be violated because we're too afraid to stand, to speak up, to tell the truth. And it's not just, you know, for your homeschooling parents, it's not just in the medical and the educational, but it's in celebrity culture. They are the, they are the ones that drive uh, these things. So if your children are watching and they're looking up, their heroes cannot be villains, all right? If they're heroes or villains, there's trouble. And what you right. said, back to what you said, uh, mama bears and grandmama bears, one legislator said he fears that more than anything. There you go. Praise God. There you go. Amen. So here's That's what the scripture all, yeah. says. That Satan will bruise your heel as a woman, but you will crush his head. It's time you crush his head. Amen. Jesus already did it. He gave you the authority. He delegated it to you. Now, we have to be strategic. I'm not telling you to run out and scream and throw your Bible at somebody. No, no that's not at all a good strategy, okay? No. Let's just say, but yeah. we have to be, first of all, not ignorant of the schemes. Yeah. We have to see, and that's what the book, Fight Like Heaven, that was the assignment the Lord gave me 24-7. I was praying and writing and revelation just flowing, flowing. And God has gotten this out all over the place. It's amazing to me. Um, someone was making a beautiful plaque for me that says, Drend on guard on a flag, mm -hmm. on an American flag. And it's actually a gun cabinet, which is kind of cool. <laughs> anyway, so you'll see it on my Drend on guard uh, normal set. But anyway, uh, they contacted contacted the company to make it. And he goes, I've been watching her. I've been following her. I was like, that's cool. So yeah. anyway, God is getting that word out. But you know what? This is not one person. This is a band of women and mothers yeah. and sisters and aunts. Yeah. And you are a mother spiritually, whether you're a mother biologically. God has called you to be a nurturer, yeah. a protector, a provider. All those things that mothers are, they're on watch. They stay yeah. up in the night. They're in the, uh, the night watch praying. Yeah. You know that something not right. You know when something's wrong. You get that little like, wait a minute. What they said is this, but what really is happening is this, right? They say women have a sixth sense. Yeah. I believe it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that thing that God put on the inside of a Amen. woman when he said it's not good that man be alone. He said, I'm going to give her that extra little. Yeah. She's going to pick up things and go, something's not right about this, mm. right? You ever done that? And your husband goes, but honey, it looks like yeah. this. Uh. Like, nope, something's not right about mm. this situation. You've got yeah. to use discernment. Pray, be wise. I would not take my child to any big organizational institution for help. I, that's me. You do what you want. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying recognize what groups and what their agendas are. Even banks now. I saw a bank. We went into a bank. We were trying to put a, a finances in a, a bank in another state that's very, very conservative because we felt like that was a wise, wise thing to do. And we were putting some finances there. We walked in a bank. I got, I got that check, that woman check, right? It was like, no, something's wrong. I pulled up their, on their site. It was, it was basically a a total site of indoctrination. It wasn't about finances. It was about the whole ESG agenda. And I could tell something wasn't right about the, I, even the logo, just something did not settle with me. And when I looked it up, I found it and we walked right out of there. And you could tell, even in that bank atmosphere, you could feel the spirits. We are living in the days that are evil, right? We are living yeah, we in are. perilous times. And the Bible tells us to be on our guard. Yeah. It tells us to watch. It tells us to pray. It tells us to discern the times for the days are evil. Absolutely, the days are. And, and you know what? Here's the other, <clears throat> here's what I, um, you know, we, we want to have some good, some good conversation here too because it can be daunting. Yeah, we don't want I, you I to feel you, it, overwhelmed. Yeah. So get in, get in your groups, you know, get in your groups and start with your prayer. You know, pray and then listen to the Holy Spirit because he will lead, guide, and direct you. But he will lead, guide, and he will direct, and then you have to move on that. And we can't be afraid because God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound yes. mind. And quite yes. frankly, fear, and you got to get this, it's just false evidence appearing real, real because that's greater right. is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. Now, we are going to be persecuted Amen. a little bit, you know? Amen. Yeah. 
you got to, you know, you got to hide that word in your heart, you know, because it's like, it's like Popeye spinach when you need it, you know, you call it up and then you're like, yeah, I'm ready to go, you know, so, but um, get yourself some, some sister girlfriends and do that early morning prayer time, you know, do a prayer walk, walk around, you know, there's a book, it's called the circle maker, you know, and you have to walk that thing around until he does it. Pray until something happens. Push, y'all, push. We can do this because with God, what? All All things things are are possible. possible. Amen. Amen. That is the state's motto. We can do this. And this is why I love, I love. I love her. I love she you. is also. I love her. And I love you. I love you. I mean, she gets me going. Woo, she gets boy, me going. Right yeah. Hey, take your sister's hand and let's just say, together in Him yeah. we can. Amen. Yeah, that's right. And together, together in Him we can. Together, together in Him we can. You already Amen. have a victory. Amen. Amen. You Amen. already yes. have a victory. Amen. Why do you think Satan fears you? He fears you. He fears fears what you you can do. So let's just pray. I just feel there is strength in this. And this is what I think the theme is coming out more and more in this whole conference is that we need each other. We need to band together. Like mind, like heart. Why are we like mind and like heart? Because we love him. He's our king. He's our master. He's our most high. And when you make the Lord your most high, every word in this book is truth. Mm. And you're conscious. Conscience will not allow you to do anything else. Your conscience calls. God's spirit on the inside of you says, you cannot comply. You cannot do this. You cannot submit to tyranny. You know, Daniel didn't do it. He wouldn't do it. And the lions did not attack him. He was able. People come to me and they've said, Trenda, aren't people attacking you? And I said, no more than anyone has been attacked throughout history that stood up for the word of God. And they came out victorious on the other side. Today is warfare. Tomorrow we see the victory, though. Amen. That's right. Amen. But we must believe. We must stand. We must pray in the spirit. We must be on guard. We cannot be ignorant of the schemes, and we really need to watch some things I'm going to share with you this evening in the conference. But anyway, let's pray. Would you pray? Ladies, let's just pray. All of us pray together. You pray with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you so, so much. You're so great. You're so great. There's nobody like you, oh God. You are the great I am. You're the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Father God, we come to you right now because with you, all things are possible, and without you, nothing Mm. is. Lord God, we know that the battle is not ours is yours, Lord God, and we're just your representatives, your ambassadors in the earth, Lord God, and we just love you so much. We are willing, oh God, we are willing and we are able, Lord God, so give it to us, Lord God. Download it through the Holy Spirit, Lord God, to these women, Lord God, what it is that you're calling them to do in this season and in this time. Yes. Lord God, we come against yes. every plot, plan, scheme, attack of the enemy yes. to the just throw them, to, to discourage yes. them, Lord God, and we call forth that boldness, Lord yes. God, that Esther, Lord God, boldness that said, if I perish, I perish. We call it forth. We call forth the Ruth anointing that said, you know, um, entreat me not to leave you for where you go, I will go. Your God will be my God. We're calling forth the Deborah anointing. (laughs) And therefore, I, Deborah, arose. That's the season and the time, Lord God, that we are in. And I declare it and decree it over each and every woman here today. Lord God, they have everything, all the enablement, the empowerment, the provision, Lord God, yes. to do that thing, Lord God, to take back this culture, Lord God. We can do that, Lord God, because you've given us all power, Lord God, to do it. We can speak to the mountains, and with the faith of the size of a mustard seed, it will be moved into the sea, Lord God. The enemy is not He does not have the final say, Lord God. You have the final say, and you've given us, Lord God, the victory, Lord God, and we're going to walk in it, Lord God. Though, though, Lord God, sometimes it seems like the enemy is advancing, Lord God, we're going to take up the sword, Lord God, of the truth, Lord God. We're going to hide that word in our heart, and we're going to call it forth, Lord God, and then we're going to keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. We're going to gird up our loins, Lord God. We're going to come together in unity, Lord God, across denominations across the color line, Lord God. We rebuke the lie that we don't get along, Lord God. The devil is a liar. We are more alike, Lord God. We love 
each other. Yes, and we, we say do. that we love each <laughs> other. Yes, we we love each other, Lord God. Yes, and we're going to speak that Jesus. thing, Lord God. And we're going to rebuke the lie that this whole thing, Hallelujah. that our nation is full of racism. That's a lie, yes, Lord God. Lie. We are one nation Jesus, under God, God indivisible with liberty and justice, justice for, for all. all. Born yes, and God. unborn. Hey, yes. We see the truth and we're set free as yes. a nation, Lord. We ask you to open eyes, to remove yes. blinders oh, from those who have been swept up in these agendas or have succumbed to them because of greed or because of promotion, Lord. We pray a holy conviction yes, over this nation, a Holy Spirit name. conviction, Father. Yes, we pray God. you would visit our senators, yes, visit yes, our Congress, yes, visit our Supreme Court, yes, visit Lord the God. White House, visit every church pew yes, and every God. pastor, God. We thank you for a holy, a holy shaking, a holy shaking. Holy shaking, God, across our nation, that everything that can be shaken will be shaken, but that which cannot be shaken will remain. That will remain, Father. Our nation will come forth. Canada, we call Canada forth in the name of Jesus. We bind those lying, devil-controlling spirits there that have tried to oppress people. We pray courage and strength to those that have stood up and that have had even their finances spoiled and taken. We pray for them for strength, for courage. We come against this tyranny because we know this is from Satan. He is the original tyrant. And we tear down his kingdom because Jesus already did it. And so right now we rebuild, we tear down the enemy's lies, and we rebuild families. We rebuild the nation. We rebuild the churches. Father, give the buildings and give the churches to those that will preach the gospel. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you, Father. We call for repentance. We thank you for repentance in our land, God. Repentance that will start in the pew. It will start in the pulpit, actually, and then it will go to the pew, and then it will go to the nation, Father. We thank you, Lord. You forgive us. Lord, forgive our nation. We stand in the gap, and we intercede, and we ask you, Father. We thank you that you love this people, and you love the people of God, and you love the people that don't know you yet either. And so we intercede for them, and we ask you, Lord, they're blind would be removed and they would come into the kingdom. We know not everyone will, but those that are in the valley of decision, that we are called to hold back the darkness so they can come into the kingdom of God. We pray for them, Lord. We pray that their eyes would be open, especially this young generation. I intercede for these young women, these young men, God, that have been targeted by Satan, who hates them, who hates their made in the likeness and image of God. We come against the kingdom of darkness and we say, take your hands off of our our children. Our Take children. your hands of off Jesus. of our godly yes. seed in the name of Jesus name Christ. Of Jesus. We cross the line and we tell you, get back. Get back. Go, get, get in, get. in Jesus' name. In Jesus We've been told we couldn't cross the line, but we tell you to get back and we cross the line and we go and we tear your kingdom down. In our schools, in our medical community, in our nation, in our governance, in all of our politicians' lives, in our cities, our capitals, all of the places, the legislators, Lord, we thank you, a mighty, mighty army of godly people that love you. They're humble in heart, but they're fierce in that they love their God and they will do exploits for their king. Thank you, Lord. You are our king. This is our hour. For such a time as this, just like Deborah and Esther and Ruth, we have been called, just like Colleen, just like Ruth, just like Drenda, just like every single one of you, we have been called into the kingdom for such a time as this. Amen? You are anointed and you are appointed, and this is your battle to win in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Woo, glory, glory. Thank you, Glory sister. to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Colleen, I just believe you have a meek and gentle word <laughs> from a bold spirit. Oh, goodness. You Ooh. know, I'm just so humbled. I'm so humbled at the work that God is doing in this place. And I just want to say, I commend my sister Drenda and my brother Gary because what they are doing here, guys, is unique. And pray for them. Pray, pray for our pastors all across this country, guys, because we need more pastors to stand up, yeah. be equipped. You know what? She didn't ask me to say this, but I'm going to say it. 
this book, she's got so much good information for you in here. She is standing on the word of God and standing on truth. She put a lot of research into this. This is educational. This is gonna equip you. Read your Bible, read great things like this. But guys, let us be a people of prayer. Let us fall on our knees, Lord. Let us take that time in the morning. Find that extra time. If it means you have to get up at 5 a.m., get up at 5 a.m. That's your sweet time with Jesus. He will equip you for the day. Get together, get together friends, and circle your neighborhoods, and circle your, your schools, yeah. your churches, and circle your city in prayer. We can take back our country. In the yes, mighty name of Jesus, Amen. that's what he Amen. wants. Amen, hallelujah. And I wanna encourage you to love on a young person. Just love, these young women, they really are looking for mothers. Yes, they They're are. looking for mothers. They are looking yes. for spiritual mothers. They're looking for friends, someone they can talk to. Please don't judge them. Instead, right. reach your arms out and love them. The devil's lying to them. He's trying to take their life. He's trying to harm them. If you're a grandma, don't sit back and just criticize what's going on. Do something. Talk to the legislator and then go talk to the young girl. Amen. They need love. Tell her your mistakes. Tell her your struggles. Yeah. Tell her how yeah. you struggled at times, yeah. you know, with your marriage, or you struggled at times knowing if it was right or that was wrong, or, you know, or you were involved in the abortion movement and you're yes. sorry that you were right. and how you were duped. That's you know, right. I'm telling That's people right. that now. I had the That's opportunity right. to minister to a young man who's homosexual, who believes he's homosexual, and doing hair. And I just sat and told him my story. He was like, What are you doing? Where are you speaking? What are you speaking about? I told him how I was duped by the abortion industry and how. How we were taught to kill our own children and how I was mm. used yes. by a system that was trying to yes. make money off of me. And I went through the whole thing. And he said, I've never heard that perspective. Mm. And the parallel with what he's dealing with yes. and the stand he's taken, he doesn't even realize. And what you said, Miss yes. Ruth, the enemy has tried to, this is what angers me. I'm sure it angers you. They've tried to couple the LGBTQ agenda with civil rights, with uh, skin right. color. That's it is right. not the same thing it's at all. And they've tried to use that as a way to drive an agenda right. that would divide people That's and right. make us feel like it was racist yes. if we spoke up against the LGBTQ agenda toward children. And so we've got to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. We love all people. We love all people, all backgrounds, wherever they identify, whatever they're doing, we love them because God loves them. Amen. And so we have a heart for them. We don't want to harm anyone. We're not angry at them. We are angry at Satan and his schemes and those who are perpetrating those schemes for money. Amen. And that's what it comes down to. Amen. It's money. It's Follow money. the money. Follow the so money. We do, do we need to vote? As we yes. get out of here today. November 8th. <laughs> November 8th. That's right. Yes. That is your right. And vote. go to the polls. Yes. Go to the polls and wear your Jesus t-shirts to the polls. <laughs> That's right. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> wear your Jesus t-shirts yes. to the polls. Yes. Yes. Don't do it online. Yeah. Don't mail it in. Go in, you know? <laughs> be bold. Be courageous. Uh, get out there, you yes. know? Yes. I mean, come out the closet, y'all. We serve a great and mighty God, <laughs> yes. you know? Yes. And he is worthy to be praised. He's yes. a mighty God. Amen. November 8th. Amen. We've got to close here today. Yes. But I just want to encourage you that God loves you. He's for you. If God be for you, who can be against you? And so take your stand. No fear. No shame. No being pushed back. No being uh, put into situations where you believe lies. All confusion goes from you today in Jesus' name. God is for you. And if you are struggling with your identity, you're struggling. All of us have struggled because Satan is the liar, the counterfeiter. He's told us all lies about ourselves, whether it was whether our sexual identity or whether it was shame or guilt or all kinds of things. We've all been broken. We've all been hurt. But God is the healer, and God will heal you today. He'll help you. He loves you. All you have to do is call on the name of Jesus, the Bible says, and you will be saved. And then get in a good church, get in the Word of God. And I just made a decision a long time ago. I'm just going to obey this. And you know what? It's worked very well for me. After 40 years of serving God, I've watched him do miracles and amazing things with me, with our family, with our marriage, with our five children, with our grandchildren. God has a good life for you. Don't let Satan lie to you and tell you anything else. But you must turn to God.
God and do it his way. We cannot do it our way and be prideful and say, no, I will do this. And if God loves me, he'll love who I love and he'll let me love who I want to love. That's not going to get it. God created you. He knows what makes you tick. He knows what he created you for. He either made you male or female and he loves you and he has a destiny and a purpose for you. And anyone that tells you anything else is a liar. So this is Drenda. Uh, Drenda, and this is Drenda on guard. We're so glad you joined us today. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Colleen. Let's give them a big shout. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Wow. We could go on all day, but we'll see you next time. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Praise Ooh, God. Glory to God. Hallelujah.